Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, it's all about the drop-dead gorgeous Mercedes R107. Let's get into it. Now, this to me is the iconic front of a Mercedes, because I'm a man of a certain era, and I grew up with programs like Dallas, for instance, where I think Bobby Ewing had one of these. And to me, these cars, the Mercedes R107, were always that glamorous, glitzy, sort of like luxury two-seater car. But these cars were made from 1971 to 89. That's a pretty long run. And stylistically, they didn't really change much. They had mainly lazy V8s, lots of power. I think some came with straight sixes as well. In fact, if you remember, Tim, we came across one of these in a Flanders rally we did over in Belgium. Well, surprisingly, for the size, these made really good rally cars. It I think they quick. did really well in, like, safari rallies. Yep. It, in fact, it was beating us on that rally until it went into a ditch. <laughs> well, you've got to finish. In fact, we went into the same ditch, but we actually got out. If you remember the car light enough, we, we came around the corner, we? I saw the thing in the ditch, I thought, oh, he's gone in the ditch. And at the same time, I went in the ditch, but I was light enough to come back out again. But yeah, amazing cars. And I think these cars are what the word wafting was invented for, because that's what they do down the road. They kind of waft down the road. Now, we were planning to take this out on the road and do a lovely video outside and take the roof down, but... We live in Wales and there's another storm going over today, so you might hear the rain on the roof. But if you want to see a video of us driving an R107, click on the link above, because this isn't the only one we've done. In fact, this was the first one we did. We converted this car ooh, five years ago. Back in 2019 is when we converted this car for a company called the SL Shop. And anybody that's into Mercedes will know the SL Shop because they are the go-to place for all your Mercedes parts and restoration and they did the restoration on this we did the conversion and this is just about to go out to its new customer out in jersey which for those who don't know is a little island just off the coast of france but it's part of the british isles and hopefully he'll have better weather than we are today so we can get this roof down so today it's going to be inside the workshop and we're going to give it a little bit of a tour around the car and how we did the conversion now this is a 1975 example we're setting in here and you definitely know you're in an old Merc. It's got that massive, huge steering wheel. It just feels solid, luxurious. Um, as far as the electric conversion side of thing is concerned, we had to put the state of charge dial there. Now there's normally three vents there, but the central ones, you know, we thought, what's the point of having a central one and where are we gonna put the state of charge gates? And it was a perfect size to put it there. So we took out the middle vent and put in that there, put a chrome bezel around it as well. But anybody that's got a Mercedes SL or R107, as I call them, uh, will be wondering what that is. Because this is not normally in an R107. Nearly all R107s are automatics, which posed a bit of a problem when we came to the electric conversion because electric motors, or I should say automatic gearboxes, don't like electric motors with that instant low down torque they they just don't get on in short so we had to find a solution to put some kind of method of getting the power from the electric motor to the rear axle now you can either use a gear reduction unit uh, which we thought of doing but the one that was available at the time is a very noisy clattery item back five years ago things have moved on now so what we did is we put in a Mazda MX-5 gearbox, believe it or not, and it works brilliant. It's a nice, small, compact gearbox. It's got five gears and it just works perfectly. And we already had an adapter plate for the MX-5 gearbox to the motor that we used. Now, motor-wise, let's have a chat about that. Now, this car originally was a 350 SL, which meant it had a V8 in, obviously. And that V8 gave us around about 210 pound foot of torque. So when we put the motor, or when we spec that motor, we wanted it to be pretty much the same kind of lazy V8 power feeling through that Mazda MX-5 gearbox. So we went five years ago now with a HPEVS 
AC34 dual motor, which it looks like one long motor, but it's actually got two windings in it. So it's actually two motors in one housing. So that is underneath there, made to the MX-5 gearbox. And then battery wise, half of the batteries are up front and half are in the rear. And it's a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack total. Um, we used Tesla batteries back then. So there was five in here in this box here and then five in the rear. We've got uh, a number of things that you lose when you take an engine out, like power steering, pumps, and vacuum. And vacuum is quite important in Mercedes because the vacuum is also used for things like the power, um, the central locking system and other bits and pieces. So we've got an electric power steering pump over there and down somewhere in here, or oh, it's down there, is an electric vacuum pump that provides the electric uh, vacuum then for things like the brake booster but also the other bits and pieces that the rest of the car needs. Now here in the boot we've kept exactly the same amount of boot space as I had previously because behind this panel here used to be the original fuel tank and that's where we've put most of the batteries in the rear and there's one or two I think underneath this panel here where the old um, spare wheel used to be. So boot space is exactly the same. And we've also put the old PFC chargers in here as well. So it's got a charger this side and a charger that side. But yeah, real practical car still because it's still got all of its luggage space. Tim, have a look at this. This is a perfect example of what I was saying before of how solid old Mercedes are. Listen to this door shut, right? Ready? See if the mic can pick this up. That is a solid thud, isn't it? You just get that feeling that this car is built well and by engineers and not by a company that's run by accountants. This is how cars should be built. My Lotus makes the same noise. Your Lotus does not make the same <laughs> noise, Tim, at all. Now, I think the Mercedes R107 and what came prior to that, which is the Pagoda, are one of those convertibles that look good with the roof up or with the roof down. So this is what it's all about for me with an R107. The top down, if it wasn't absolutely chucking it down today, we'd be out in this, wouldn't we, Tim? With it, what, down to the south of France? Well, I don't know about that. Maybe Abu Dhabi with the wind in your hair. Well, wind in my hair, I don't know about your hair, mate. <laughs> Before you get blown off. But, you know, it's days like this and cars like this that make me want to move this workshop to California sometimes. I mean, just look at this. This is a perfect car for just cruising along. I'm so jealous of the customer in Jersey. On the, in the sunny summer's days in Jersey, this has got to be the perfect car for him. See, I don't think you can beat a Mercedes SL R107 for what it is. You know, that two-seater Tourer convertible. Comments below, please. Prove me wrong. What other car is out there that has the same characteristics, the, the low down, lazy power of that V8 or the electric motor, which is exactly the same torque now, and the elegance of it and the quality of the drive as well. I mean, I went over a cattle grid the other day and it felt like I was in a hovercraft because it just floated over it. And now it's got the 150 mile range as well. It's easily enough range for that day out or weekend out to the coast and back. It's just the perfect summer car, if only we had the weather in Wales. So, not quite the episode me and Tim wanted to do today, if I'm honest. We wanted to really get this out and about on the road, but I don't know if you can still hear the rain is pouring down on the roof above me here. But fear not, because we have done an episode, as I mentioned before, on an R107, and it was a rare sunny day in Wales. So click on the link above if you want to see that episode in full. But if you want to see the short abridged version, Tim's going to put some video clips of that after I've stopped talking and you can sit back, relax and watch one of those rare sunny days in Wales with a Mercedes wafting down the road. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one. Right, we better get cracking, mate, because uh, we're already running late. So uh, we're going to pop in the car and I'll see you when we get there. Oh, 
I'm in a state of zen. That has to be one of the most relaxing journeys I've ever done.